Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're um, here inside the house with a Christmas tree behind me. The reason being the Christmas tree is covered in ornaments, but so are my citrus. They're all going into color right now. I've got my lemons, my oranges, my grapefruits, and I've even got some kumquats I'm going to share with you in this video where the colors are just starting to happen, the harvest is just beginning, and this is a wonderful time to be harvesting your fruit and pruning them at the same time. I'm gonna give you some lessons on how to accomplish that with your trees in your garden. So I just wanna also thank my friend Al Wilcoxon in Canton, Illinois, for his Christmas card, which he shared with me and my family. Um, and I just wanna thank you again for the card, and um, within the card he writes, thank you so much for all your help with my lemon trees this year. And I'm hoping that by watching these videos, you too can learn lessons to improve upon to make your fruit growing experience that much better. Come and follow me outside. So here we are now under the canopy of one of the Meyer lemon trees in the garden. And you'll notice that it's just loaded with these yellow lemons that are ready and ripe for harvest. But when harvesting these lemons, come and take a look a little closer. You'll notice that we've got all of these bundles of lemons. And you can notice that some of these leaves are coated with the ivory organics. And this is, um, you know, some product that was coated on the plant when it was more heat stressed. As you can see, there was some damage at these upper leaves that actually suffered from burn during the summer months. And the ivory organics was later applied to protect the plant. But take a look what we're going to do next is when harvesting the lemon, if you pull on it, I just want to share this real quick. You risk the concern, I can't believe this happened on my first try, of tearing the flesh, which is not the right way of pruning. And you can see a part of the lemon peel was still attached to the stem. The proper way for pruning your lemons is to actually cut them from the plant. And what we'll do is we'll remove bunches like so. And I'm cutting, but I want you to cut more smart than what I'm doing so far in this video. When harvesting your lemons, think about what is going to be the next best growth areas. What are going to be the next best bloom areas on those stems? Don't just simply cut all of those fruit off the stems. The right thing to do is to prune those branches back to where it's going to continue to grow and bloom and support more fruit in the years to come. And here's, here's the point and here's the lessons I want to make here. You'll notice that when I made that last cut, I made a cut over here, which is leading to nowhere, nor are there any leaves or buds or anything coming off of it. The proper way and a more logical way would be to prune it back to where you see some leaves. And I'm actually going to cut this back all the way to right about here. And before I cut it, what I'm going to do is remove all of these leaves and all of these fruits and I'm going to encourage the plant to continue growing right at this point right here and I'm going to cut it at an angle right near and right underneath this leaf which has got a bud which will ultimately form new branches which will support the new flowers and we're just going to cut it like so and now we've got all of these additional lemons as well and then over here there's another bundle of lemons and I want these branches to all continue to grow and hang and, and support more fruit but I'm going to do the same thing with this bundle of lemons and just prune it like so, right here. And now what's gonna happen, and take a look at all of these lemons that we've got on just this one prune. And what we'll do when, when bringing them in the house is we're gonna now separate them like so. I'm just gonna cut it about a quarter of an inch right above. And this will be the perfect way to actually harvest your lemons and then store them. And you can keep them in a cool, dry place in your house um, for anywhere from 10 to up to 21 days. Um, so about two to three weeks, they'll store. But with all the rest of these lemons, take a look at how many more lemons we've still got in here. They'll remain on the plant for anywhere up to two to four months and still be in good quality condition on the plant. So we've just harvested all of these lemons. We've got enough lemons now to support my family for at least the next seven days. and. I want to make sure that the rest of my harvest remains fresh. The major concern a lot of um, citrus growers always have is, when do I prune my citrus? They're always blooming, they're always flowering, and a lot of citrus are actually supporting fruit year round. There's always various different sizes throughout the plant. And let me share that with you as well that's happening on these plants as well. Check this out, you may have noticed um, some of the flowers that are happening here. 
Check out all of these blooms over here as well. Take a look. And among these flowers, you'll notice that there's some baby lemons that are getting ready to develop. And then these here are some blossoms. And then they'll develop into these small fruit that'll eventually form the fruit that we just harvested. And take a look at, there's a bee over here just waiting. It's just standing still. It's a little bit too cool this morning. He's just waiting for the sun before he makes his way to the other flowers. Over here, I'm under the canopy of my semi-dwarf Eureka lemon tree. And take a look at all of the yellow fruit that are developing behind me. I've got a lot of yellow fruit, and then I've also got some green fruit over here that'll be ripening in another few more months. Let's go harvest some fruit from the other side. Follow me. So here's a fruit that I'm gonna harvest, and I wanna um, draw an example again as well. This branch, which is coming off of the, a larger branch, it's not the tree trunk, but this branch is supporting this younger branch, which is coming down. What we're gonna do is prune it because it's pointing in the, you know, in a downward direction. I might sever the entire branch off, but for the sake of supporting the leaves, which will ultimately form more flowers, I'm just gonna prune it like so. And you'll notice that I've just shortened it by almost um, 50%, but these leaves will later support either more branches or the flowers, which will ultimately support more fruit, but it's now a much stronger structure to help support more fruit. Let's take a look at some other citrus that we have here in the garden as well. Follow me. So here we are next to our Lisbon lemon tree. It's a variety that's very similar to the Eureka lemon, but the Lisbon lemon, which, it, which defines it as being unique from the Eureka, is that Lisbons are more drought tolerant, they're more frost tolerant, they're much stronger citrus trees. Um, and flavor, quality, size, they're all very, um, they're very competitive, very similar, and very hard to distinguish from the Eureka lemon. And again, when pruning these, let's take a look at this branch structure. If you take a look over here, we've got um, some lemons that are starting to turn yellow. We've still got our bunches of green ones. And the branch structure, you can see, is just being pulled down. It's, 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 it's coming down. And the goal is to make sure that the plant has a structure that's upward. You're gonna wanna make sure that all the branches are either growing to the side or up and never pointing down. Um, as you can see with this stake that I've got over here, I'm supporting this structure to grow up, even though it's got some fruit on it over here that's pulling it down. Um, so I might have to strengthen that as well. But the goal is you want it to have a continuously upward growth, whereas this that's growing down will ultimately create branches and leaves that'll be further shaded um, and compromising the integrity and the quality that these leaves can you know, create the sugars necessary to support a lot of fruit. So what we're gonna do here is Again, when harvesting the lemon, we're gonna bring this branch back to this branch over here. We may even stake it in the future, but I'm just gonna prune it to this leaf right over here. Again, about a quarter inch above the leaf, and that'll be removed. And here's another fruit as well. I'm gonna follow it back. And with this one, I'm gonna bring it back all the way to where it came from, the branch behind. And we're just gonna Cut, make a nice flush growth right there and cut. Take a look again at our Meyer lemon tree, the tree that we started off with. If you take a look at it from this side, you'll take a look at all of these lemons that are here as well. And all of these branches are pointed completely vertically down. And these are all branches that will be removed all the way back to about this point over here and possibly staked if necessary, otherwise possibly removed all the way back to where it's originating from the trunk. But all of these branches, even though they've been fruitful, will all be removed. The energy, the flowers, and the fruit for next year will be coming from a higher level. The, the plant was much smaller last year, and it was those branches that have created those fruit, but all of these branches will be pruned as well as we continuously harvest our lemons over the next couple of months. Um, so again, this is a wonderful time to be pruning and at the same time the plant is going to be flowering and creating the next generation of fruit that you'll be able to enjoy here in the garden. One other thing I want you to point out over here is if you take a look at the tree trunk, you may notice, and we talked at the beginning about how some of these leaves, if you even take a look here on this side, you'll notice that they're a little bit lighter. And these have all been sprayed with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard um, in the summer to basically protect it from sunburn. As the heat was just so intense that a lot of the leaves 
began to burn. We've had too many record high heat days um, to protect it, but it's more than just sunburn that is um, being protected with the Ivory Organics product. It also has oils that re naturally repels insects as well as during the winter. If you're dealing with below freezing temperature nights, it'll also help prevent sun scald, which is an issue where the bark will crack, creating openings for insects to then enter the underlying wood. But take a look again at the white bark, and you can see that the paint has since um, expanded as the plant is growing. So we'll be doing another layer of Ivory Organics in the upcoming um, weeks. And I just want to show the product. Here's the can over here. And it basically reads Ivory Organic. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint. We just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. It's, and it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And it reads over here, um, it reads, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces. And our gold label, which will be coming out in the later winter and early spring with most of our stores, um, we'll have this added um, label, which reads registered material for use in organic agriculture. Um, and we're very proud about this as well, meaning it's certified for or, uh, organic farm use as well, which is which I'm proud to share with you as well. Let's review, visit a few more citrus trees before we conclude. Follow me. So here we are next to our Oro Blanco grapefruit citrus tree. It's one of the sweetest of all the grapefruit varieties. Take a look at all these fruit, and as you can see, the fruit have gotten so large, we're still gonna wait at least a few more weeks before harvesting these, but you'll notice that it's just pulling the branches down, um, which is okay, but when we harvest it, all of the branches that are going vertically down will be pruned back, and we're gonna make some nice clean cuts and encourage the upper part of the tree to continue to grow more branches, more leaves, and ultimately support more flowers that'll create the next generation of fruit. Let's take a look at a couple other citrus, follow me. Here we are next to a kumquat tree. You can see that it's grown into a very bushy canopy. Um, it's got large fruit as well as a lot of young fruit within it. But these will all begin to ripen within the upcoming weeks or possibly um, a month from now. What I also want to point out is that if you take a look a little lower, you'll notice that this one here was coated with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 color green. Take a look at that. So my daughter, who just overheard um, me explaining that the tree trunk of this kumquat is coated in the green ivory organics, she was like, oh, I had no idea that it was even coated. She was like, I thought that was the natural color. But take a look at the protection, and the reason it's coated is to protect it from sunburn as well. Being that it's in the tree form, this tree trunk is gonna be exposed to far more sun than it otherwise naturally would be if it was in the bush, bushier form where you'd have a canopy to shade these lower tree trunks um, and branches. So that was the reason for coating it, was to avoid the sunburn damage to this particular tree. Let me share one other um, example with you. Follow me. So over here is another Eureka lemon tree. This one is of the standard variety. This one will grow at least 15 feet to as much as 25 feet. I just installed this earlier this year um, as a small plant, and it's already um, grown at least 8 to 10 feet and has a long ways to grow in this upcoming year. But you'll notice in just the first year's growth, we've already got a lemon right here if you can zoom in and check this out and take a look as well at all of the flowers and little fruit that are in this plant as well let me show you over here is some younger fruit you can see there's a pair of them right there take a look at those younger blossoms as well right here and right there some more blossoms another blossom and then just below it, the young fruit. And another. So in this video, we're talking about harvesting. Harvesting is an awesome time to be pruning. But how much of your citrus tree is supposed to be pruning? And the answer is very minimally. As you can see with the plant structure behind me, and I've done video lessons on this as well, the goal is to continuously try to shape the plant. We've got all these stakes over here to bring these branches down, and the highest branches up there will continue to mend them and shape them and frame them in a way that'll maximize the amount of light on all of those branches to maximize the amount of um, sugars the plant can produce to support the maximum yield of fruit. When pruning, if you see any dead wood, there's no right and wrong time of the year. If you see the deadwood, you gotta remove it as soon as you can. When it comes to um, 
you know, any branches that are obstructing your path or, um, or desirability or height or anything else, then again, you can, you can prune. Um, generally, the goal is to keep your pruning limited to no more than 25% within any given year. So your pruning limitation should be very minimal. If there are any large branches you intend on cutting, winter would be the ideal time as the plant's metabolism is the slowest and the plant would risk far less stress than at any other given time of the year. The other thing too I want to share with you and the reason I brought you to the front yard is I wanted to share with you all of these seeds. These are all California native seeds and we're in California, hence we planted California native seeds. If you live in other parts of the world, find those plants that are native to your area um, and grow those and what that'll do is attract all of the local biology and we're talking about the entire ecosystem of insects and butterflies and birds and all the other pollinators that exist in your area and bring them into your garden to help also pollinate those trees and the fruits and the vegetables that you've got in your garden. So try to find native plants and introduce those in your, uh, into your garden. I can see that among these plants, um, one that pops right out is um, I've got these California poppy um, plants which will be blooming in the spring and I'll be sharing those with you soon. Um, just behind me over here is the Indian mallow and then to the um, right of that is the woolly blue curls and that was covered in beautiful blue flowers. So we're gonna have our golden poppies with the woolly blue curls and then the yellow Indian mallow flowers and we're just gonna have a diversity of color. And the best part about it is they're all native. They've evolved over here over tens of thousands and millions of years and are superior to anything you can pick up at your local box store. So be looking for native plants and bring those into your garden as well to maximize the yields of your fruits and vegetables in your garden the upcoming year. So if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and most importantly subscribe down below so it'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching. Happy gardening. Mm -hmm.